Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth this week. Now, before we go into today's um, study, you know, we've been talking about the book of First Corinthians, and then we're in chapter 2. But before we go into that, I want to invite you for a special fasting and prayer meeting. Now, this is a meeting we hold every first of the month is a 24 hours fast oh you 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 don't want to miss this praise god i love the testimonies i've been getting this is this is going to july is going to be the third of these meetings with the first we started the first one in may we had it in june now what do we do we fast for 24 hours meaning from 12 midnight you know our own time to 12 midnight the next day, what, are, what do I mean? So on, on the first, 12 midnight, 31st night, which is on Tuesday, that Tuesday breaking into Wednesday morning. And then we finish the first 12 midnight Wednesday, not Wednesday, 12 midnight on Wednesday, praise God. So I don't want you to miss it. Plan for it. And during this fast, we pray for at least 30 minutes at every watch. So we pray at 12 midnight when we start. We pray at 3 a.m. And then we pray at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9 p.m. It's, it's refreshing. So listen, no matter how busy your, your schedule is, that's what I'm telling you early. So plan for it. Look for how to create space on that day, you know, to join the meeting. And we're going to be having a prayer meeting via Zoom. So you need to show, you need to indicate your interest and then we send you an invite. So whatever platform you're using to, to, um, to hear or watch this broadcast right now, send us a message. Send us a message and then we'll send you the link for the prayer meeting. Get ready for it. Your life is about to change. I'm telling you the truth. God is doing an amazing thing in our lives. Praise God. So wherever, whatever country, now there are people who joined us from different parts of the world. Now, um, you, you can fast. Even if you fast using our time, you still end up fasting 24 hours. Praise God. So because we're praying from here, so you can use our time. You understand what I'm saying? So, so you, you just plan for it. Get ready. And it's going to be interesting. Remember, on Wednesday, actually, 12 midnight on Tuesday, we're starting this prayer meeting. That's tomorrow night. Praise God. All right. So um, let's go into our study today. First Corinthians chapter 2. Now, now on Friday, we stopped in verse 7. So let me let me let me just read up from verse 6. And then we go on. Let's see how the Lord's going to help us this week. Say, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that comes to naught. See, he says, the wisdom of this world does what it comes to naught. Not, it, it comes to nothing. And see, the Lord has already told us that's what's going on even right now. See, the wisdom of this world is fading. People, don't, people are getting confused by the day. <laughs> now, only those who dwell or depend on the wisdom of this world, they are the ones that are getting confused. Those who dwell on God, those who follow the wisdom of God, they don't get confused. You know why? Because God shows them the light. You know, David says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Two ways the word of God is. The word of God leads us. It leads us by being our light so we see where we are going. It leads us by being our lamp so we see where to place our foot. Praise God. Now, so he says, the wisdom of this world comes to naught. But verse 7, he says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Praise God. Now, listen. He says, the, the princes of this world, they don't know the wisdom of God that we speak. Now, what's he saying to you? The world will never understand the way we speak. The world will never understand the way we communicate. They will never understand it. Why? Because, see... What we speak or the language we speak is from above. Now, when, when I say the language we speak is from above, I'm not just talking about we, we speaking in tongues now. 
And you know, Jesus actually said, this sign shall follow them that believe. And one of the things he says, he says, they will speak with new tongues. And I remember the Lord saying to me, see, we, we've always assumed new tongues is, you know, what we all refer to as speaking in tongues. And then the Lord said, it, it goes beyond that. It, go, it is actually saying you, you will speak a new language. Now, when I say language, I'm not just saying you speak um, Swedish or you speak Spanish or you speak Yoruba. That is not your language. Even your English, your tone, the way you communicate will change. Praise God. See, you know, get this straight. When we speak in tongues, we're doing something. We're speaking a language. Now, say what language? But I don't even understand what I'm saying. You know, you know, you know. Some people even argue that, hey, that thing people are doing is nonsense. With well, the Bible say when they spoke in tongues, people had now have explained that, you know, some time back. That when, when on the day of Pentecost, when they were speaking in tongues, and it says everyone in that place was hearing them magnifying God in their own language and in their own tongue. I told you this. I said it is not because they were speaking their language. They were not speaking their languages. So it's not like the Yoruba man in that place was hearing Yoruba. No, you will miss it if that's what you're thinking. So what happened? The Holy Ghost came down, not only on 120 people that were praying. He came down on all the people. You know, the Bible talked about devout Jews who had come all over the world to worship in that season. That's why he chose the day of Pentecost. So the Holy Ghost came on lots and lots of people, I dare say, up to 3,000 people that day. Not when Peter preached, no, the, way, the moment, when they began to speak in tongues, the others received the Holy Ghost also, and they began to get interpretation of tongues. That was what was working on the day of Pentecost. So some people were speaking in tongues, others were receiving interpretation of tongues. So it's not necessarily that Peter, James, John, and the 120 of them were speaking all the languages of the world. No, that's not what they were doing. They were just magnifying God and blessing the name of the Lord and speaking as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Now the people that were there who received the Holy Ghost also, I need you to understand this. That was why the Holy Ghost chose the day of Pentecost. Notice in that scripture, he said, Devout men came from all over. Now, who are devout men? Godly men, men whose hearts were, were, were yearning for God. So they actually came over to Jerusalem to worship. Think about it. Coming all the way in those days, there were no planes then, so they had to use their mole or, or their horses or donkeys to travel all the way. Think about it. To worship God. So God gave them a special gift that day. <laughs> That's why Peter, I see Peter didn't have to talk too much on that day. Where he say, you know, because they, they didn't understand. Now the disciples knew how to respond to the Holy Ghost because Jesus had taught them. They had seen Jesus speak in tongues. You see, but then these other people don't know how to respond to the Holy Ghost. So when it began to happen, that's why what they received or what they could do when they received the Holy Ghost was to interpret what they were saying. See, so there, something is going on here that we don't understand. But the disciples understand. That's why Peter had to announce and teach the people, this is what happened, praise God. And then they believed, praise God. So, so when he says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. So when we begin to speak in other tongues, we are speaking the hidden wisdom of God. I want you to get this. We're not just doing shala, bra, 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 bra. You know, some people think we do that to spend time, you know, just to keep us, you say, I pray for 30 minutes. What we do? Just shakala, bra, 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 bra. Okay, try it. Try and do the raka baba for 30 minutes and see how funny it will be. Because <laughs> it's, not, it's not something we make up. We yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit as, as He gives us our trust. Praise God. And that's why I tell people, don't just stick with one tongue. You know, say, My, you know, see, you are speaking the mind of God. You are speaking the wisdom of God. So I want to pray concerning my finances. I want to speak the wisdom of God concerning my finances. So what happened? I begin to speak in other tongues. Now, when I speak in other tongues, I, I should be conscious that because this is how it works. I'm conscious to speak. To, to listen in in my heart. Because as I'm speaking in other tongues, thoughts and ideas begin to come to me. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Thoughts and ideas begin to I have never thought about before. So I'm praying concerning my finances. And then an idea just came. What about you starting up something like this? Oh, oh. You know, sometimes it may look like, ah, I beg, I beg. No. 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 Take note of those things that are given to you when you're speaking in tongues. This is how you change your life. You can spend two hours praying in tongues. If you don't get this part, you will remain the same. You will speak in tongues for three hours and you will remain a beggar afterwards. But when you, when, you, when, you take, when you observe what the Spirit of God is bringing to your heart, at that moment when you're speaking, have a note, have a paper, uh, or, or, or have a pen, have a diary, have, have a writing material, something to write on. So as you're praying in Kabosha, something drops in your heart. Pause. Write it down. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm telling you the truth. See, when you speak in tongues, holy wisdom is ministered to you. Because as your poor father, I don't know, I've been broke for one week now. What's going on? I don't understand what's going on. Lord, I, I need your help. I need heaven to help me right now. So I begin to speak in other tongues. Now, what's going on? I'm speaking as the Spirit is giving me utterance. Now, what utterance do you think the Holy Spirit will be giving you at that moment? Utterance concerning what you're praying for. Like Romans said, for we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. So I begin to pray and pray. Suddenly, like, it can just be a prayer point. Pray like this. Oh, I've heard that several in my life. Praise God. He said, pray like this. And then he said, well, when he tells you pray like this, Stop and start praying like he told you to pray. Praise God. And then you see a miracle happen. But that's how your life is changed. And then the wisdom that is coming to you at that time, it brings you information. That's how you know it's from God. It upgrades your information. It upgrades your knowledge. I said, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they knew that all this crucify him, crucify him. Oh, let's, 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 let's get it. Arrest him. Look, you know, and then all the things they did to Jesus. If they had known, See, that was what is going to turn the world around. Hallelujah. They didn't know that they were working out God's purpose in Christ Jesus. And they pushed Jesus. See, had they known it? Let me tell you this. That's how the devil doesn't know your next move. He doesn't know what God has planned for you. He thinks you're rising in your company and he organizes a lie against you so that they will fire you. He didn't know that he's working out God's wisdom. So now you are fired and then the devil is happy. Hey, hey, God has been looking for how to get you out of that organization because of what he wants to do in your life, which is far bigger than that. So don't cry. Don't cry. It's not the time to cry. It's the time to turn around to the Lord and say, Lord, so what's your wisdom right now for me? And you begin to speak in other tongues. What's going to happen? You will speak the mind of God and you will get out of that situation and get into the big thing that God has planned for you. Praise God. Woo! We've got to stop here. Listen, receive the wisdom of God right now for your life. And every situation you find yourself in that is unpleasant, you are coming out of it right now by God's wisdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Until tomorrow, bye-bye. 